he has a receiver oh. looking for Kitch, and the ball hangs up. Kitchen makes the catch, stays on his feet, touchdown. Waits for it, catches it at the 40-yard line and brought down. Wide open receiver, Singleton. He brings it in, he'll take it the distance. Crosses the 20, he'll walk into the end zone. Eagles strike first, they're on top six nine. Welcome to Friday Night Under the Lights. Tonight's game is sponsored by A.J. Doman Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram and A.J. Doman Chevrolet at the foot of the Morgan City Bridge in Berwick. Core Physical Therapy and Sports Performance, here to restore the quality of life you deserve on Brasher Avenue in Morgan City. Conrad Industries, serving St. Mary Parish and the Marine Industry since 1948. Conrad wishes all of our local teams good luck. Lapco Manufacturing, feel safe, work smart, look good with Lapco FR. www.lapco.com. Patterson State Bank, free checking, great rates, low down payment home loan options, and the best in mobile banking. PSB, quality community banking since 1925. GJCurbside.com, your complete online grocery store, including local and regional products. Check our website for delivery options. From our curb to yours, GJ Curbside. Henry Bo Lagrange, the next senator for District 21. Unmatched experience and proven leadership to represent all of District 21. Stazione. Get our Stazione app or order one of our mouthwatering po boys online at staziondeli.com. Stazione. Are you hungry yet? Bayou Bend Fitness Center, 1097 Northwest Boulevard in Franklin. A healthier you begins at Bayou Bend. Pool Dew Sports Bar, Morgan City's number one party spot in your steak night hookup every Wednesday. Danny's Fried Chicken, it'll make you smile. Serving Morgan City since 1968. MC Bank, sharing the hometown spirit since 1955. Pelican Companies of America, your one-stop spot for all your rental needs. 985-312-5509. Oshner Health of St. Mary, quality health care close to home. Extreme Daiquiris, where the drive through is always open and the drinks are always cold. Universe Street in Bayou Vista. Taco Bell in Morgan City and Bayou Vista. Open late night, delivery through DoorDash. And Allen's Communications, locally owned TV, cable, internet, and telephone service. Call 384-8335. Protect them and build a hedge protection around them in the name of Jesus. God, we thank you for everyone who is here. God, we thank you for the coaches. We thank you for the staff, the principals. God, continue to keep them and guide them in the way you will have them to go. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Oh, say, can you see by the Lord's early light what's so proud? stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watch were so gallantly streaming
welcome the Patterson Lumberjacks, who comes in at one and three. Clarence Franklin, a big come from behind victory last week against Central LaFouche. Yes, he did, and you know what it is. Franklin played up, but Central LaFouche had a little difficult time, but the Franklin Hornets were able to get back home and get an opportunity to take on the Patterson Lumberjacks. Patterson took a long road trip to Chalmet. They were overmatched. The score showed it, but tonight they looked to heal up. Yes, basically coming back down. Uh, had some things that made that happen, but at the four quarters, they it did make a difference, but see if tonight can be a starter for something new for the Patterson Lumberjacks. It's always nice to get a game in on Thursday night, especially when the weather's as good as it is. As always, join us on the sideline. Aaron ought to go. Aaron, this should be an entertaining game. We're looking for a great game tonight between two competitive football teams that, that live and thrive just right down the road from each other. But uh, it's a little warm down here on the field and very humid, typical South Louisiana for this time of year. Prior to the game, we had a little breeze blowing from right to left, but it's pretty much most of it has laid down for now. The field is in great shape. Uh, the grass is a little long, but it's cut. It's reasonably cut. It's just cut a little longer than most fields. So we are uh, set up for a great game tonight. Patterson's going to put Cam Davis behind center tonight. He should bring a little athleticism to that position. Big, strong, rangy with a big arm. Without a doubt. And, and Boo, that's the thing it is. You know, they didn't have that opportunity to see the last couple of weeks with Cam Davis at quarterback. Mercado was at quarterback. But now with Cam Davis, probably going to make a little bit different for that, Pat, excuse me, for that Franklin defense. What I've known about Notice about Coach Tremaine Johnson's ball club here on the Franklin side. Got a lot more guys in uniform than we've seen in years past. No doubt. You know exactly what Franklin is. This is their first home game. A lot of guys still healthy. They don't see too many guys with the white jersey on. But see if they can make see, get through this game athletically well. Coin flip at midfield. Looks like Patterson has won the toss and they'll take the football. So we'll see what Patterson wants to do. Do they get out and start a dominant running attack, or do they use Cam Davis and try to get it out in the air? Watching them doing warm-ups against the air, they look pretty good. Look pretty good, making sure that they did some things. We've seen them in the Jamboree. Coming with a different concept now, see if that young offensive line can make some things happen. Both bands in the house tonight. Good crowd on both sides. And this is always, each and every year, a game we look forward to. Pretty much the last couple of games right now. This is the last game for the Patterson Lumberjacks to be going to the district competition. Franklin Hornets as well. Jack's got 12 guys on the field, so they're trying to get those numbers straight. Carlos Brooks back deep. He stands alongside Javen Christopher. Waiting for the official to blow the whistle. Now he does, and we look forward to getting this game underway. Two teams separated by just 15 miles. And Brooks takes it at his own 20 yard line, heads back up Bill. First contact, not to the 40. He rolls forward to the 43-yard line. That's a 24-yard gain, and we'll get our first look at the Patterson Lumberjacks. Let's see how Patterson Lumberjacks going to set this up. Franklin, as you know, very athletic on the outside as well to match up pretty well with the receivers from Patterson. Well, previous time looking at this Jacks team, they are multidimensional. They can spread you out. They can stack you in close and run it right at you. Elijah Johnson, he's the workhorse. He wears number five. He stands alongside the Jacks quarterback. He'll get the carry here. Forward progress for one. Good job by the defense of the Hornets. One thing we see now, Franklin's going man to man. So they exactly, they Jimmy's and Joe's be better than yours. So see if the Patterson and Jackson can be meticulous and start working that running game first. 
New one, new quarterback with Davis being in the game. See if they're going to try to just settle him down first to try to throw the ball. Kobe Marcel, a junior, he's to the near side. Christopher to the far side. They'll go back to Johnson, turn him back inside. Here comes a whole host of Garnet and Gold, and they bring him down at the line of scrimmage. Johnson trying to get some running off tackle. Garnet is able to come up and make a short tackle to bring up a third down situation. Historically, the Hornets has always had talented players inside the ends. Them tackles are tremendous. Always guarantee in the middle right there, just like you said, boo. Passing situation here, third down and nine. Davis barks out the signal just underway here from Franklin. He'll roll out right, throw it backside. A little bit of contact, no flag. Looked like he had a little bit of the jersey. Wow. It'll be incomplete. He was looking for Johnson. Looked like the official had was reaching. He just didn't grab. Didn't, didn't drop the flag. Ironically enough, Booth, uh, the running back from the backfield was out here clear by himself for the Patterson Lumberjacks. Looked like Davis had a one-man shot for his receiver on downfield. Matthew Domain in to punt it away for the Jacks. And the Hornets have held Patterson to a three and out on their opening drive. A little confusion getting the right amount of numbers in the game. Good spot. They'll kick it away from Mack. It'll take a nice Patterson roll inside the 25-yard line. And that's where the Hornets will set up shop. 33-yard punt, no return. And here come the Hornets. Said in pregame, Franklin coming in two and two. We're trying to get some momentum before district starts. So. Caesar in a quarterback for the Hornets barks out the signals. They'll spread them out for receiver set. They'll hand it underneath. And big strong run by Davis. Running through tacklers all the way across the 40 to the 44 yard line and a good start for the Hornets. Wow. Oh, it's nothing fancy about that. Just a direct handoff to Davis. Once he got past the line of scrimmage, you've seen that he was going to be a lot to stop. Big first down for the Hornets. Yeah, not the size guy the secondary no. wants to see no. coming right at you. <laughs> not this early in the game as well. What happens on that play, Boo, that defensive end spot got kicked down in the inside, which opened to the outside. Lightfoot in at running back. Davis takes a breather. First down and 10. Lightfoot will get it here. Same play, opposite side. This time the Jacks are there. They'll stand him up, bring him down. Stretching out down the line of scrimmage right there. Seemingly enough, if you've seen Davis in there, if you see somebody in the backfield, he probably wasn't previously on the film, so you got a little strike right there. Just underway here from Franklin, the A.J. Doman Automotive Family High School Football Game of the Week. And we got a good one here tonight. Not district contest, but being so close together, both teams would like a win here tonight. Thomas adjusts to the slot. Light, Lightfoot stays in the game. They'll give it to Jackson. Jackson trying to find a runner on the near side. Nothing there. Flags fly. Usually a sign of a hold. But a good job by Cam Davis to bring Lightfoot down for a loss. For a loss flag on the plate, but the ex excellent pursuit by the Patterson defense. That is a hold. They'll take the play and decline the penalty. So that sets up third down and 12. In 
the Hornets will spread them out. Three receivers to the far side, one near side. Caesar back in the pocket, four-man rush. They'll swing it to the outside, looking for Gray. Overthrown and incomplete, and that'll bring up fourth down. Caesar gone, trying to go to the flat. Patterson able to get the three and out. Excuse me, four and out after the Davis big run. You thought they was going to try to come back with Davis, but uh, Franklin Honus went a different way. Fourth down. Each offense trying to feel out their opponent's defense. Defense wins the battle for both teams early in this one. Good snap and hold. The punt is a nice one. Take a good Hornets roll inside the 25-yard line. That'll be a 33-yard punt for the Hornets, and we'll get our second look at the Patterson Lumberjacks. Patterson three and out on that first possession. Boone just trying to establish the run. One pass by Davis. Brings up first and ten for the Lumberjacks. Both crowds trying to wait for something to cheer about. This one got off to a slow start. First down to ten, Cam Davis. He'll take a quarterback lead, keeping himself off tackle, and he's chopped down. Short gain of one. Good, Good job up. by the Franklin defense. That's the difference that Patterson offense is trying to make. Dalen Edwards, a senior, gets his nose in there and brings down a Cam Davis. That's no easy task. When you're doing that, you're trying to make sure that you establish that run to get in your best athlete's hand. So see if that come back up for a bigger opportunity for the Jacks. <laughs> Second down and nine. Nothing there. Cam keeps it himself. Trying to find running room. Manages to make a little out of nothing. You know, when them first two looks wasn't open, decided to tuck it in and make something of what he could. Third down and seven on its way. Get to the Franklin Honus coverage downfield. Really much a coverage site. All the receivers covered downfield. They'll call it third down at seven as we mid the halfway point of the first quarter. Franklin comes with a rush, crushes Cam Davis out the pocket, tries to step on the defender, and a good open field tackle by Andrick Davis. He's doing it on the offense, and he's doing it on the defense. Davis doing exactly what he needs to do, staying at home from that defensive line spot. Short tackle on Davis would have been in first down situation, but I'll stand the job by Davis. Fourth down and eight. Patterson will put the punting team on. Domingue puts the foot into it. End over end near on the far side. And again, takes the lumberjack roll outside inside the 45-yard line after a 30-yard punt. Both teams trade punts, waiting for the offense to get it going. Waiting for the offenses to click a little bit. Second possession for each team now. Franklin have an opportunity to make some things happen, see what's going to happen. Probably looking at one play before a hydration timeout. First down to 10, they'll have it on the far hash, the freshman. The shine light foot, your long back. Quick pass to the near side. Thomas makes the catch, turns it to the outside, and a good tackle by Carlos Brooks in the open field. Brooks gets tackled from that cornerback spot. Both teams will head to the sideline for a hydration timeout. We'll do the same. You're watching high school football here on the A.J. Doman Automotive Family High School Game of the Week. 
You're watching Friday Night Under the Lights, brought to you by A.J. Dolman Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram and A.J. Dolman Chevrolet, core physical therapy and sports performance, Lapco Manufacturing, Patterson State Bank, GJCurbside.com, Henry Beau Lagrange, Stazione, MC Bank, Pelican Companies of America, Taco Bell, and Allen's Communications. scrimmage. Seesaw back to pass. To take a shot. Middle of the field. Well covered. Jalen Jackson bracketed by the Lumberjacks secondary. A good coverage by the secondary of the Lumberjacks. In a cover three situation. So you have a lot of confidence with your corners on the outside and your free safety. So outstanding job by the Jacks. That'll make it third down. Here comes the pressure. He'll hand it off right in the middle of the pressure. Down wow. he goes. White foot on the carry. No gain in the fourth down again for the Hornets. Other than the first play of the game for the Hornets, either team has had any success. The defense this. doing exactly what they need to do. Last play right there. Patterson coming on the blitz. Able to bring up a fourth down situation for the Franklin Hornets. But like you say, Boo, nothing is going, is going back and forth. Toe to toe. <laughs> mm. Pressure that time. He'll get the punt off. 28-yard line is where they'll spot it. Five oh one to go here in the first quarter. Patterson yet to get a first down. Yet to get a first down. You've seen an opportunity where Cam Davis was trying to run as far as on the keeper, but that speed for the Franklin defense has been really shutting him down. Yeah, Nothing in between the tackles. Just need to keep probing the defense till something breaks. Something's eventually going to break. Over. A little more size in the backfield with C.J. Williams. He stands alongside of Cam Davis. Late players running on the field for Patterson. They'll go to Williams. Williams off tackle. Rush through the first tackle. He'll have the first down and more down to the 44-yard line. A little change of play. Big back. Williams. Seen Johnson initially on the first two possessions, but big first down right there for the Jacks. A little crack, and he takes it for 14. That's the first first down of the night for Patterson. Either team has been able to get across the opponent's 50-yard line. First down and 10. This time Davis will keep it himself. He'll follow Williams. Good key block. Flag on the play. He'll get it down to the 45-yard line. Finally going out of bounds, but that flag is in the area of holding. You know, those big linemen in the middle trying to hold for three seconds, and after that, it's all key to bar the door. Lumberjack lineman. A little confidence builder right there for the Jackson that what can actually happen with this offense if it does go to work. Yeah, and you got to pay attention to how the game's being officiated. I know they have some games you hang on to people yeah. all day and never get a call. But if you're early in the first quarter, you've seen a couple holdings already, right. <laughs> then you know what it's going to turn to, huh? First down and 20, Patterson. 
No score here, 425 on the clock on a beautiful Thursday night for high school football. Davis looking around, nobody to throw to. He'll keep it himself. He'll have the penalty yards back, plus some extra. He'll get down to the 46. Good decision there by the senior quarterback. And, and you know what? That does put your defense on your heel. So these guys in the middle got to make sure they can't just run downfield because eventually can open up the passing game for the, for the Jacks. 15-yard gain for Davis. Make this much more manageable down in distance. DeMond Davis up front. He's leading the way. Blocking as Elijah John Johnson checks back in for Patterson. Again, Davis back has mm. DeMond Davis in the flat. He makes the catch. A difficult catch, and he's close to first down yardage. Davis looked like he got kind of stretched out when he took, made the reception. Yeah, and he's slow to get up. Davis was able to get off to his brother. Yeah, watch Kane Davis throw it around during pregame. Looked pretty good. That was not one of them. <laughs> Put his receiver in an awkward position. Good news for Patterson, he came down with it. The bad news is it's slow to get up. Slow to get up, let's see. Hopefully he can get back up. Third down and one, we're already through the midway point of the season. It's amazing how fast it's going, boo. How difficult it was, hot was the first three, four games of the season. And now you think, hopefully things start selling it back down. But beautiful night for football. Beautiful condition of the football field. You look at the time they're taking with DeMond Davis on here. You know, it's not your typical cramp. A little bit more serious than that. You know the other game in the parish tonight, Central Catholic taking on Generet in Morgan City. That's their first or well, second, Central second district game of the year. <laughs> Big win last week in Thibodeau. Yeah. Overtime win. Overtime win for the Eagles. So that game came down to a fourth down. On a busted play, quarterback scrambled, got in the end zone, the PAT good. And that got Central off to a good start in their district. Got Davis back up, see if he could get back into the game, get him checked out in the sideline. Third down and one here. You would have to think the Jacks have two tries at it. But new wave football, you see, when you got third and one and your quarterback's five yards deep in the shotgun, you know the days of getting under center. That's over, going. boom. Davis will keep it himself, puts his head down in the forward momentum, has the first down, that'll move the chains. Good opportunity for the Jacks in this possession right here. Moving the chains. Davis pick up another first down for the Jacks. Aaron Auto goes down on the sideline. Aaron, a game that we thought was going to be a little more. He's turning in a slug fest. True, we were expecting to On the side of the field. Elijah Johnson has a little run and run. And look, that's four yards. Doesn't look good on the highlights, but as a coaching staff, that's all you want, four that's, yards. That's all you want. And also a good home, good handoff, good pass to the line of scrimmage. Following your blocking, positive yards for the Jacks once again. I know before the uh, the last series, Mr. Bill said they only had Patterson only had three yards total offense. So, the positive aspect here in the end of the, toward the end of the first quarter. Davis. 
Davis stands in the pocket, takes a shot deep. Well covered, looking for Carlos Brooks. Broke free near the end, but Corey Thomas step for step with him. Thomas one-on-one on the outside at corner. The coverage. Patterson offensive line, Noah LeBlanc, he's a sophomore. Chase Leonard, a senior. Jeremy Watson, a junior. Got the big guy, Landon Gunn. He's just a sophomore. And then you got Ty Morales, a junior. So they're young on the offensive line, but they got some size to them. Third down, whistles blow. Patterson coaching staff didn't like what they saw. They call a timeout. Go to sideline, talk about it. We'll take a quick time out. This is the high school football Thursday night edition here on KWBJ. You're watching Friday Night Under the Lights, brought to you by AJ Dolman Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram and AJ Dolman Chevrolet for physical therapy and sports performance. Lapco Manufacturing, Patterson State Bank, GJCurbside.com, Henry Bo Lagrange, Stazion. MC Bank, Pelican Companies of America, Taco Bell, and Allen's Communications. And welcome back to Franklin, the Hornets, and the Lumberjacks in a critical non-district contest here before both teams start their conference play. Lumberjacks on the move. Big third down here. Play action pass. Looking in the flats. Has a receiver. That's Williams. Williams makes the catch. Pinballs his way for a first down. C.J. Williams coming right out the backfield. Look confidence. Build a catch right there. Pick up the first first down for the Jacks once again. Eight and five. Got six. That'll move the chains. And the deepest... Penetration by either team here in the first quarter. Not sure what the delay is here. Didn't see anybody call a timeout. They're pushing people to each sideline. See the head official trying to get people's attention. Looks like he's trying to get one of the guys out for Franklin, telling me he have to leave the game. <laughs> Got that situated. They're back on the field and back ready to play. First down to 10 Lumberjacks, 118 and counting here in the first quarter. He'll keep it himself. Sprint handoff, near side. Got one extra block, he'll take it down to the 30. One extra block, and guess who's back in the game? DeMond Davis back in number 11. Yeah, good news right there for Patterson. Yes, sir. And also let the block over that. He pick up some extra yards for the Lumberjacks. Well, I think you're starting to see those guys from Franklin been on this particular series starting to get a little winded. For that defensive line for sure. Good controlled offensive attack here for the Lumberjacks. Looks like they've settled into the game. Demon Davis stands in the slot. They'll go Cam Davis running behind. He has the first down and more. Crosses the 20, turns on the speed. He'll have it down to the 10. And a first and goal for the Jacks. Without a doubt, just being patient, just spoke about that offensive line. Once you've seen him got past the line of scrimmage, got one block in front of him, pick up a big first down for the, for the Lumberjacks. That puts him inside the core of physical therapy and sports performance red zone. He'll gain 21 as they'll spot him at the nine-yard line. So they found a wrinkle right here with Davis getting an extra blocker. Let DeMond Davis lead the way. C.J. Williams in the backfield. Now they'll play power football. 
Williams gets it right up the middle. Franklin says no way. Big number 50, Cordy Landry wraps him up. Just fancy. Well, Mr. Williams, guaranteed home. Let's bring up to the end of the first quarter. That'll do it here in the first quarter of play. The Lumberjacks knocking on the door. We have no score here from Franklin. You're watching Friday Night Under the Lights, brought to you by A.J. Doman Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram and A.J. Doman Chevrolet, core physical therapy and sports performance, Lapco Manufacturing, Patterson State Bank, GJCurbside.com, Henry Beau Lagrange, Stazione, MC Bank, Pelican Companies of America, Taco Bell, and Allen's Communications. Welcome back to Franklin. A 12-play drive thus far for the Patterson Lumberjacks has it, have it second down and goal, and they would like nothing better than to finish off this drive. I tell you what, we're seeing a difference with Davis in the game at quarterback. Uh, Williams, the power back, Johnson, scat back, and also DeMond Davis. <laughs> Aaron Auto goes down on the Patterson side with an injury update. What you have for us, Aaron? On uh, Demond Davis, when he ran out of earlier in in the uh, or later in the uh, first quarter, he got a little bit of a stinger, kind of had a little numbness in his shoulders and his arms. But uh, they they checked him out, came on the sideline, and as uh, Clarence mentioned a moment ago, he's back in the football game playing football, so he's good to go. Well, much needed here. He's been playing a pivotal role, leading the way for these runners. He wears number 11. Davis will throw to him, and a good job of getting wow. his hands up and knocking it down to my Johnson, the junior from Franklin. Johnson's able to get it up. Pass was intended for DeMond Davis. Would have been to walk into the end zone, but good job by Johnson. Franklin defensive line has size. He got athletic ends as Tamaya Johnson. That'll bring up third down and goal from the six. Mm. Bottle snap. Wow. Davis able to get back on it at the 11, but a wasted play there. That'll bring up fourth down decision time. For Field goal at this point, or do you go for it at the 11? How Davis has been at quarterback, they're going to try to take a timeout and sort this all out. Yeah, I'm not sure why they're going to the sideline. I think we had an injured Franklin player. They thought Franklin was calling the timeout. They were just trying to get a player off the field. <laughs> So the head official whistle for the ball to be in play. Play clock starts, and here comes Patterson on a fourth down and goal from the 11. A 14-play drive is either going to be celebrated or wasted right here on this call. Back to pass. Davis tries to keep it himself. Then big number 50 once again. Morales brings it down in the backfield and the defense stands. Long drive in the first quarter. Patterson just took the back half of that first quarter, but Franklin Horn is able to come back and shut the Jacks down. We talked about the four-yard gains. As long as your offensive plays are getting positive yards, things are looking good. You have one negative play <laughs> or an incomplete pass, and then next thing you know, that's you find difference. yourself on fourth down. You know, we've seen Davis been trying to run the ball and doing an outstanding job, but the passing is still a little bit, a little shaky right there. So here come the Hornets, other than their first play from scrimmage. Haven't done much. Cesar sits in the shotgun. This is only the eighth play of the ball game for the Franklin Hornets. Throw it near side. Good sure-handed catch. 
in a battle to get him down. Can't get him down, but he'll get the whistle as Thomas makes the catch for a gain of six. Brooks on the outside, able to do at that cornerback spot, show him up just when he made the reception. We always like to get the tail of the tape from Aaron by being on the sideline. Aaron, you look at the size of both ball clubs, how they match up. In, in the line, uh, especially on the offensive side, but uh, they bring uh, a, a little bit of weight to, the, to their lines. Uh, like I said, Patterson just a little bit taller than the uh, Hornets. Second down and a careless mistake that time. Williams couldn't hold his water. Steps across the line. He'll get the offsides. That'll be an automatic first down for the Hornets. Just trying to come on a blitz from that corner, from that safety spot. Just a little extra anticipation. Get the Franks Horn, Franklin Hornets the first down. First down and 10, we saw Davis at running back, just that one play on first down. It's been light, but the rest of the way. Three receiver set, single safety. And he'll have to get involved in this play for the Lumberjacks as Lightfoot takes it up the middle and he's brought down by C.J. Williams. Uh, Franklin offense capitalized. Patterson tried to come on another blitz again. Show the difference right there. Big run by the Hornets. Back to back first down for the Hornets. So after a 15 play drive by Patterson, the Hornets are trying to answer that with a long drive of their own. Back to Lightfoot. Light mm. off tackle. On his feet, looking for daylight. He'll get nine. The ball comes out. The whistle had already blown. The whistle there. Yeah, still fighting for yardage, but they'll get a benefit there as an early whistle kills the play after a nine-yard wow. game. Big pickup by the Hornets. Thought it was been a turnover, but still possession for the Hornets. Lightfoot showing a lot of speed right there once he get past the line of scrimmage. Yeah, not good news for the Lumberjacks. Last two plays, they're secondary. First to make contact with Lightfoot. Now they're going to call an official timeout to hear the Patterson coach talk about the whistle being blown. But regardless, once the whistle blows, it's, that's it. It's blown. And I understand what the referee is trying to do is hurt, keep one of the players from getting hurt or something like that. But it was a rather quick whistle. Next week, uh, game of the week, we'll go back to Morgan City. Central Catholic hosting the Centerville Bulldogs. First time being able to see the, Cent the Central Catholic Eagles this year. Looking forward to it. Aaron been roaming the sideline for 40 years, and Aaron, you got a coach complain about an early whistle, but at the end of the day, it's only going to be a complaint. Well, that's exactly right. It's a complaint. Even if the referee comes to you and says, yeah, I messed up, I'm totally wrong, it doesn't matter. When that whistle blows, the play is dead, and it's got to be that way. I don't care if it's Pop Warner football or the NFL. Uh, players have to know when they hear the whistle, stop playing. It's the only way the game will work. So the good news about the complaint is you might get a call later on down the game. Right. Davis will get a second carry here. He's wow. caught at the line of scrimmage and carries three tacklers for a four-yard gain in the first down. You know, in that first quarter, we've seen that first handoff to Davis, and he did an outstanding job. Then he just came off the field. Looked like that was a little help for that uh, Franklin offense. But Davis does play defensive tackle for, on the defensive side for the Hornets as well. Hornets on the move. The crowd continues to file in. This is going to be a good home crowd for the Hornets as their team trying to get over the 500 mark, trying to get to three and two. Four receivers set. They'll fake it to Davis. Caesar takes it himself. Nice open field tackle by Brooks. 
They'll bring him down for two yards. Give credit where credit is due. That senior cornerback's not getting ran off too well. Brooks still at that cornerback spot, making a short tackle on the quarterback. With the success Davis has had, I like the play call. Fake it to him and see if we can get some extra yards yeah. outside. And see what's happening, Boo, when they get an extra yardage like that is because Patterson is continually coming on blitz and getting out, uh, getting caught up in gap coverage right there. Jack's defense definitely set up to go after the run, leaving a lot of single coverage on the top side. As we get a delay call by the back official. And we talk about negative plays. That's one there. That's second and eight. Now you're going to find yourself behind the sticks. And each team passing game hadn't been that, that well, so... Second down and long, back to Davis. Good stiff on him. He has running room. It's his speed. He crosses the 45 down to the 43-yard line. He'll have a third down and short. Cam Davis, for one of those safety spots, he would come up and make the tackle. You don't want to see your quarterback coming up with a little Big Davis like that, but. Looks like they're trying to. Use Davis sparingly. Don't want to wear him out on either side of the ball. He'll make a big play or two, then they'll bring him down for a breather. Light, light foot will check in to give him a spell here on this third down and short. Good hard count. But Franklin will call a timeout and talk about it with 6.32 to go here in the second quarter. A surprising score here from Franklin. 0-0 against two teams that have been known to put up some it's points. up, but right now, battle rock going on the offense and defensive side of the ball. Crucial, crucial possessions for both teams. Patterson at that last, last possession got out to the five-yard line. Davis fumbled the ball. Tried to go for the four down situation, didn't take an opportunity for getting a scoring, op scoring opportunity. Yeah, Franklin trying to take their time, boo. He's trying to sort all this out. Aaron's on the sideline, Aaron. When you see Edric Davis, number zero for Franklin, running into the secondary with a full load of steam, you got to have some courage to step in front of that. Well, let's put it this way you definitely don't want to be the safety on that side of the field, that's for sure. Because if you're making a tackle on him, you are going to have a long, long night ahead of you. <laughs> Sure the coaches are yelling at their guys. Get him low. Get him low. Get him low. Those big guys don't like to see you coming at the ankles. Third down on its way for Franklin as this crowd is coming alive here from Hornet Stadium. <laughs> Davis back in, takes a direct snap. Trying to get outside. There That's not where his strength is. And whose number we're going to call again? Number 24, Carlos Brooks. Brooks came from the corner spot. And just like you just stated, when you have a big guy coming at you, go for his ankles. And that's what Brooks did. They would come over to the top. Yeah. Got to like what you saw right there defensively as Davis was running more sideline to sideline than north and south. Yes, sir. And that's what you want to see a big guy running sideways like that because they're not that nimble on their feet. A lot of power going forward. And the clock goes down to six minutes. That means here in the second quarter, we'll get another hydration timeout. A 0-0 zero, zero score here from Franklin. You're watching high school football here on AWBJ. You're watching Friday Night Under the Lights, brought to you by A.J. Doman Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram and A.J. Doman Chevrolet, core physical therapy and sports performance, Lapco Manufacturing, Patterson State Bank, GJCurbside.com, Henry Beau Lagrange, Stazione, MC Bank, Pelican Companies of America, Taco Bell, and Allen's Communications. High 
school football season. The A.J. Doman High School Football Game of the Week has seen some exciting games each and every week. We expect nothing different from the one we got here tonight. No doubt, and I tell you what, this is just going backwards and forth. Offensives now, Franklin getting their opportunity here in the second quarter. They have an offensive movement. Patterson had this late in the first quarter. See if they have opportunity for it four down here for the Franklin Hornets. On his trip inside the Lumberjacks territory, depends here on this fourth down play. Caesar bark out the signals. Fourth down, light foot, you long back. They'll swing it to him on the outside. Nice. Cut the open field. No cost. First down, swing pass to Lightfoot. Able to get that good foot plant, pick up that first down for the Franklin Hornets. Well, he did his name some justice right there. He was light on his feet. Very light. Again, six yards. That'll keep the drive alive. Keep the penetration of the night here for the Hornets. First down and 10, and a rapidly played first half of football. Gray has it, sweeping around the outside. Another flag flies in the holding area as they'll finally wrap Gray up on the sideline. This direct tall sweep to Gray, but maybe he stepped off against the Franklin Hornets as well. Wow. Little shot block below the waist. Big, big penalty right there against the Hornets. Yeah, a lot of times you call that penalty a drive killer. <laughs> Some of your smaller guys, when you got a big guy running at you, <laughs> you go low, except in that case, it's not a legal block. First down to 27. And he went from a promising drive to a, he needed really a minor miracle here on first and long. And forcing each team to do something that they had been doing too well that is passing the ball. So. A few games ago, we watched this Patterson team play, and they had a lot of personal foul, unsportsmanlike conducts. We brought it up in the broadcast. Yeah. I watched during the week. Head coach talked about it. He's going to address it. He said, I got yeah. good kids in the locker room. We understand what we got. We're right. going to clean it up. And I'm going to tell you today, you can see the difference. You can definitely see the difference on it. Um, on a previous play, you seen DeMond Davis when the guy was – Initially thought he was going to be outside, but they had called a timeout. You seen Davis kind of talk to him like, hey, man, you know, keep yourself together. So that's that senior leadership that the Patterson Lumberjacks do need. And uh, like you said, Boo, thus far has been pretty well here in the second quarter. Vast improvement. In a game that's more like a rivalry game, sometimes you get a little craziness going on, but not tonight. Both teams playing good football. She's all back to pass, looks short, now throws to the intermediate route. And he has a receiver in Jackson as he makes the catch, falls down, but a good gain of. Good possession reception right there by Caesar. 11 yard gain for the Hornets. Just got that it all back spot. on first down. Got, got, got to the sweet spot, get the reception, build up a little confidence. Now you have your better options here with second down play. Like how Caesar eyeballed the man in the flat that sucked that guy up, and then he looked behind him and found Jackson wide open. Back to pass again, taking a shot deep, looking for the same guy on his fingertips. Jelani Jackson, a perfect throw by Caesar, just couldn't bring it down. Could at be first, I'm thinking well covered, but boy, that was a good pitch right there. Good. Pitch right there off his fingertips. Two-man coverage over the top. Williams, that is, at that free safety spot. Hornets not able to capitalize. That'll bring up third down for the Hornets. In a game of opportunities, you're not going to get many of them. And when a game played this close, 
need to take advantage of each and every one. No doubt. She's on back to pass again. They'll flush him out. Scrambling to the outside. Has a receiver on the sideline. He was looking for Madison. A little wide. It'll be incomplete. And fourth down on its way for the Hornets. Smart play right here would just be to punt it away and play the field play position. Play the field game. position. Caesar, uh, no big pass rush by the Patterson defensive line. So Caesar had an opportunity to throw the ball. Hadn't seen Caesar try to run the ball because if the coverage sacked a coverage down the field. So here comes the pressure. Good end over end kick near the sideline and out of bounds. So it'll be a short punt. We'll see where they spot it. They spot it at the 25-yard line. 17 yards on the exchange, 4.08 on the clock, and here comes the Patterson offense coming off a nice drive, 15 plays, but came up empty. Came up zero. We've seen Davis kind of make some things happen. You've seen Williams get a big run. So, see if Patterson has just settled down and be meticulous and drive the ball down the field once again. Aaron Otto goes down on the sideline. Aaron, when's the last time we've seen a 0-0 first-half scoreboard? Uh, man, I can't remember one myself. But, uh, we, we, you know, it's a good defensive ball game. These teams are both playing hard. They just haven't been able to capitalize when they've had the opportunities. And uh, they've only had a few opportunities so far. But making for a quick football game. First down and 10, Jack. At their own 25-yard line. Mm. Elijah Johnson has it. He's wrapped up immediately. Big number 56, Moses. He's as wide as he is tall. He's got good, in the backfield. Good short tackle right there on Johnson. It, and you see the, the timing of getting the plays in for Patterson. They're getting right to three to four seconds before the play is really called in. So, got to speed it up a little bit as well. A uh, loss of three here, 3.33 on the clock and counting. You wonder if the Hornets will start calling a few timeouts, trying to keep some time on the clock for themselves. In this case, the Lumberjacks call a timeout. As always, each and every week, the most coveted T-shirt in all of St. Mary Parish, the core physical therapy and sports performance player of the game. Tell you what, last week, Caleb Jacobs did an outstanding job for the Assumption Mustangs and did a great job. Uh, seen the interview at the end of the game, and he just was totally exhausted. But outstanding job by one of our recipients. Okay, looking right now, you're looking on the defensive side. What Carlos Brooks has done on the <laughs> making a lot of tackles yeah. from his secondary spot. You look at Moses on the defensive line of Franklin. So, you know, each and every year there's that one game that a defensive player shines enough to get that shirt. And, Boo, you couldn't say that more perfect tonight. These guys on the defense side have been doing an outstanding job. See if the defense can make something happen and they have a scoring opportunity as well. Yeah, when you got a 0-0 zero, zero game, that's because right. of the defense. Exactly right. So Patterson called that time out, but I would expect Franklin would try to conserve some time, especially if they can stop this play here on second down. Yeah, and that's the most important part. But ironically enough, Patterson called the timeout. They've been keeping Johnson bottled up in the backfield. C.J. Williams adjusts his spot. And Cam Davis will keep it himself. Trying to bounce it outside. And another flag. And this official is making a living on that whole call tonight. Patterson was making a check with me offense and the line of scrimmage. Checked into the direct snap to Davis. Thought he was going to have some positive yards and probably stepped off against the Jacks. Wait for the call. It is a holding against Patterson. That'll change things up here on the mindset of the offensive coaching staff on, hey, let's figure out how we get the halftime backed up deep in their own end. <laughs> Mark 
walk it off, bring it all the way down to the 13-yard line. Look for the Hornets to pin their ears back. I would expect Patterson wants to do something to keep that clock running. Yeah, you, you, no doubt. Got to be very careful down here with your back against the goal line. They'll throw it. Davis back, take a shot. He even a hole. Secondary there, they'll bat it away. There's a flag by the back judge. I wonder if they got the snap off. That flag was a delay penalty. That play wouldn't count. So the two officials are having a frank discussion about what happened. That's the only call I could see coming yeah. from that back. Yeah. Just was a one man round on that previous play, Davis. One on one, the only receiver that left for the Patterson Lumberjacks. Still waiting for the call. They'll call it illegal substitution. Wow. Had too many guys on the field for Franklin. You put it right there for the for the Jacks. That's a game management issue right there yes. for the Hornets. Coming off of a timeout. 11 on the field here, but it makes it a whole lot easier. Third down. See if the Jacks are able to capitalize right in. Davis back to pass again. Take another shot deep. Single coverage on the outside. Looking wow. for Brooks. And a nice job by Gray knocking it away. Gray one on one outside. They're over there with Brooks. Able to get his hand up, break the pass up. Sometimes I like that play if you can bait them into interception. Right. It's better than a punt. Two Third back down and eight. Leaves. The Jacks are possibly going to leave the Hornets with a lot of time on the clock. You know, and that's the thing right here. Trying to make something happen. Davis not able to get hook up with any receivers right now. Game clock. Well, the sideline showing fourth down. We have it as third down. Mm -hmm. Seemed like when they had the 15-yard penalty for illegal substitution, they counted the down. I've had this official before. In game management, it's about like it is today. Yeah, it's, Last yeah. year, same time. Let's see if they're going to make the adjustment. And that's what the coach from Patterson is trying to explain yeah, to him. Yeah, and officials holding his ground saying it's fourth it's down. No. Now they're going to talk about it once again. You know, that's one of them what you got conversations. Yeah. And they. You know, they usually keep it in their little book, boo. Yeah. Now they'll go back and say third down. So now the other side will start complaining. But a big third down here. Lumberjacks would like to be the last with the football here in the half before the half. And the Hornets would like to force a punt. They move C.J. Williams as your long back alongside Cam Davis. Two receivers near side, one far side. The Hornets crowd the line of scrimmage. Here they come. Another heave and oh, has the receiver on the outside at the last minute. Jackson knocks it away. Again. They have another penalty at the line of scrimmage with the flag. He also threw his hat. A little bit of contact here on the pass. See how they're going to sort this out. Cam Davis able to get the pass off. Good pass break up by the Hornets once again. Oh. Looks like they called a rough in the passer. If I could read lips and a hold. 
that a wall set. Replay third down. <laughs> seen more holding calls than eight than I've seen the last three years. <laughs> you spoke it, man. We was doing pretty well. Third down and eight. We run about 15 seconds off the <laughs> clock without actually changing the down. At all. So... See if they can make something happen here once again. Last two plays, just a heave and a hoe in a single coverage, looking for his guy to make a play. Back to pass again this time. They'll get him. No time to throw the ball. Moses. Johnny on the spot once again. Moses coming from that defensive end, excuse me, defensive tackle spot. Franklin ran a kind of twist on the defensive line. Patterson Lumberjack, offensive line, not able to pick up that twist. Four down for the Patterson Lumberjacks. Surprise, Franklin's allowing this clock to continue to tick. They'll punt it away, end over end, no return. They'll let it bounce. It'll take a huge roll. There is a flag on the play, I believe. Franklin might have had too many folks on the field. So a 47-yard punt, 20 in the air, 27 on the roll. And another flag on the play. So late guys running off the field it appeared that Franklin may have too many men on the field, but you never know. They're gonna let us know here shortly. Now they're calling more officials in to see what they gotta say. The spotters had moved rather quickly. Yeah, they moved too quick right before the, right when the punt had hit the ground, the spotters were moving. I'm not sure what they're trying to talk about it. What you got, what you got, and I think the answer is I'm not sure. <laughs> That's why you call them all together. See if you can put all your heads together and get something out of it. First of all, I'd like to see what the penalty is all about. Went to the sideline. Of, they got the fourth down marker, which indicates where the ball is at the 20-yard line, but the ball should be at the 25-yard line. That's the starting point. The penalties against 